this is Folksy Tales, and on this channel I talk about stories, in particular folk tales, beliefs, and mythologies. If you are interested in Tolkien lore, take a look at my channel, The Folksy Friend. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with me here today. Let's talk about a Norwegian fairy tale. The story of Tatterhood is all about not taking anyone at face value. Appearance is not what's important. So. Once upon a time, in a kingdom, there lived a king and a queen, but although they were very much in love and desired children, the queen was unable to have them. Everywhere she looked around her kingdom, every time they traveled, she would look at mothers with their little children and wish fiercely that she had children of her own. She would even see little children misbehaving and their mothers scolding them and think to herself, Oh, if only I had my own child, I could be a mother in all regards, including getting to scold them, how much I would love that. So, one day they decided to adopt a child. Not too long after the adoption, their new child, who was a young daughter, was out playing in the castle gardens with a golden apple. She just so happened to wander close to the edge of the gardens, and there she met the young daughter of an old beggar woman. And being about the same age, the children started to play together. The queen, however, soon saw this from her window in her tower, and she called down for her daughter to come up to the queen's chambers. The daughter came up to see the queen, but so also did the beggar's daughter. And the queen scolded her new adopted daughter, saying that she was above playing with such peasantry. The queen starts to chase the poor little girl out of the castle, but the poor girl stops her and says, wait, I know that you want to have children. My mother can help you with that. And the queen doesn't believe her at first, but this little girl is very persuasive. So the queen has the little girl bring her mother upstairs, and the queen asks the beggar, is this true? Can you help me conceive children? And the beggar says, no, no, I can't do that, and goes to leave. But her daughter is insistent. After her mother is out of the room, she tells the queen, just get my mom a little drunk. Give her some wine, give her some mead, and then she will get a little loose-lipped and she will tell you what you want to know. So that's what the queen did. She invited the beggar woman back into her apartments, gave her plenty of wine, plenty of alcohol, and eventually the old beggar woman started to get a little drunk. That's when the queen asked again, is there a way that you know of that will help me become pregnant? Finally, the beggar woman tells her, oh yes, there is a way. Have your servants fetch two pails of water, wash yourself in each of them, then pour the water out under your bed. In the morning, there will be two flowers under your bed. One will be beautiful, the other will be ugly. Eat the beautiful flower only. Do not touch the ugly flower. And then the beggar woman and her daughter leave. That night, the queen follows the woman's advice. She bathes herself in the water, throws it under her bed, and goes to sleep. In the morning, she finds under her bed two flowers. One is ugly and shriveled with black leaves. The other is beautiful and bright and just splendid. So she takes the beautiful flower and she eats it and it tastes sweeter than anything she's ever tasted. It is just so amazing that she can't help but think to herself, what's the harm in eating the other one? So she eats the other one as well. Not all that much longer later, normal baby growing time, she is in bed ready to give birth. The first child that she births comes out riding a goat, which assumably was also Let's choose to believe the goat materialized after the baby was born and did not come out with the baby. Let's choose to believe that. But she was also born holding a wooden spoon, so there was something going on in there. Immediately she cried out the word mama as a newborn baby. The queen is distraught. She looks at her newborn riding her goat, holding her spoon, and says out loud to this poor child, if I truly am your mother, then I wish God would give me strength to mend my ways and be a better person. Which is a terrible thing to say to a baby. But the child tells her mother, 
that there's nothing to worry about. She's going to give birth now to a second baby, and this one will be lovely. And as the talking baby said, soon the queen goes into labor again and gives birth to the first girl's twin. And this child is stunningly beautiful. The older twin was named Tatterhood because she had a gray, wrinkled, and ugly appearance and she always wore a tattered old hood that hung over her head and her ears. And the queen herself, despite being her mother, could not stand to look at her. So the nurses tried to lock Tatterhood away, either in the nursery or the pantry or whatever was available. But Tatterhood or her sister always got her out because they were always together. The twins grew up very close and they could not be separated. Now, one Christmas Eve, when the girls were about 10, there was a terrible racket that was coming from outside of the queen's chambers. And the little girls go to their mother and they ask, what's going on out there? She tries to put them off and say that it's nothing to worry about, but in time, they wear her down. Tatterhood especially is very, very stubborn and keeps demanding to know until finally the queen tells her that a gaggle of trolls and witches have come to celebrate Christmas by causing some kind of ruckus outside of the queen's chambers in the castle. Not sure how they got in there. So Tatterhood, being the very brave 10 year old that she was, tells her mother and all of the people inside her chambers to stay in there, keep the door locked, protect her sister, and she will handle it. And for some reason they let her go. So Tatterhood goes out with her wooden spoon riding on her goat and starts to beat the witches and the trolls with her little spoon, sending them howling out of the castle. However, they were making such a ruckus, it sounded like the entire castle was coming apart. And the tw younger twin started to become worried that something was happening to Tatterhood. So she went and popped her little head out the door to check on her sister. At that moment, a witch chopped off the young princess's head and stuck a calf's head in its place that she just had waiting there. And so the young, beautiful princess, now with the head of a calf, runs back into the room on all fours, mooing desperately. The witches are all chased off and Tatterhood comes back into the room, sees her sister, now a little cow, a, no, a little girl with a cow's head acting like a cow and scolds the adult saying, how could you let this happen? How could you put my sister in danger? All you had to do was keep the door closed. What's wrong with you people? She's a very mature child. So she goes to her father, the king, and she tells him, I want a ship. No people, just me and the ship. And I'm going to take my sister and I'm going to heal her. And at first, the king and the queen say, absolutely not. You are 10 years old. You're not taking your sister anywhere. And it's only after her very stubborn, stubborn insistence that they finally just give up and allow their young daughters to take a ship and sail away. Tatterhood sails the ship to the island of the witches, where all witches come from. She tells her sister, who still has the cow head, to stay on the ship. And then Tatterhood herself goes off riding on her little goat, clutching her spoon to find the witches. She soon comes up to the witch's castle and all the windows are open. So she is able to look inside. Inside, she sees that they have hung her sister's head in a windowsill right off the main gallery. And so it's pretty easy for her to just hop her goat through the window, grab her sister's head and make a run for it but the witches come swarming after her like a hive of bees and they end up surrounding her and the little goat. But Tatterhood, as it has been proven, is quite scrappy in a fight and she hits the witches with her spoon and her little goat butts them with his horns until finally they just give up and let her go. So Tatterhood is able to get back to the ship, replace her sister's head with the real head, and then they sail away. They do not sail home, however. They sail off into the distance and they sail for a very, very long time, years in fact, until eventually they come to a land 
that they did not even know existed. Assumably by this time they are now older teenagers. Now, the king of this country happened to see a foreign ship sailing close by, and he sent out soldiers and messengers to greet the ship and find out who was on board. As these messengers came, Tatterhood told her sister to stay below deck and to not come out. And then she herself started riding her little goat furiously up and down the deck very, very quickly so that her hair was flying in the wind behind her. And she was waving about her spoon as she rode on her goat. And the messengers were amazed by the sight. They asked her if anyone else was on the ship with her, very curious about this whole situation. And she responded that yes, she had a sister and her sister was below deck. But when they asked to see her sister, Tatterhood said no. Only the king himself of this country is allowed to come here and see my sister. So the messengers take this message back to the castle. And upon hearing this very bizarre, interesting story, he decides, okay, I'm going to go see what's going on with the girl riding the goat. So he goes down to the ship, and at that time, Tatterhood has her beautiful sister come up from below deck, and the king is immediately just transfixed by her beauty and amazed, and he wants to marry her. But Tatterhood says, no, you may not marry my sister unless your son marries me. She has taken on a very parental role in this sibling relationship. However, the prince was not keen because, as it has been described, Tatterhood was not an attractive young lady. But also perhaps because marrying the sister of your father's new wife is a little strange. Sorry for the bark. That was Eva. The king and his servants went about convincing the prince, saying it was all for the happiness of his father, and they talked him into it. And the day that they went out to get married was a double wedding for both couples. The king and the beautiful young sister went first. The crowds were just amazed and overjoyed at the sight of the beautiful girl who was to be their new queen. And then the prince and Tatterhood followed. He was riding his horse, she was riding her goat. And they were amazed, but in a, a different way. As they are riding, the prince looks much more like he is going to attend his own funeral than he is going to get married. And after a while of this very uncomfortable silence, Tatterhood, never being one to be shy, looked up at him and said, why aren't you talking to me? And he looked down at her and responded, what do you want me to talk about? So she said, well, you could ask me why I'm riding around on a goat. So he humored her, still being pretty sullen. He asked, why are you riding around on a goat? And she responded, is it a goat? Well, I think it's the most beautiful horse I've ever seen. And as she spoke, the goat transformed into a magnificent white mare. Then the prince went back into being quiet and sullen, as if magic had not just occurred before his very eyes. And after a little while longer, she nudges again. And she says, well, now, why don't you ask me why I'm carrying this wooden spoon? So he asks her, why are you carrying the wooden spoon? And she responds, is it a wooden spoon? Well, I think it's the most glorious silver fan that a bride ever carried. And suddenly the spoon transformed into a silver fan. But yet again, the prince went back to looking miserable and trotting along on his horse. Again, Tatterhood tried, and she said, why don't you ask me why I wear this hood? And again, he asked, why do you wear the hood? And she responded, is it a hood? I think it is the most glorious golden crown a princess ever had. And her hood transformed into a splendid golden crown. Now at this point, one would assume he would continue this and get as much out of it as he could. But no, our prince is very stubborn, much like his future wife. So he looked back down, miserable and sad, went back to being quiet. Until finally, Tatterhood, who undoubtedly is going to be the communicator in this relationship, asked him, why don't you ask me why my face is all wrinkled and gray? And so he asked her, why is your face all wrinkled and gray? And she responded, is it? I think it is the most beautiful face that a woman ever had. And as he looked at her, she transformed into a young woman, 
so stunning and magnificent, she was even more beautiful than her twin sister. And the prince was amazed. The couples reached the church and the weddings were performed and a great feast was held and their joy and celebration was unending. That was the story of Tatterhood. Interestingly, stories that contain a beautiful twin and an ugly twin are common in Norway and other parts of Scandinavia, but are really not that common in most of the rest of the world. In fact, while we find very similar variants of fairy tales throughout the world, typically this type of tale is only found around Scandinavia. In my personal opinion, I don't feel the prince deserves this transformation. I think that we as an audience know that she is good of heart. She risked her life to save her sister. She's a fighter. She's strong. She clearly never let years of her mother's rejection beat her down. And her sister was just kind of there. <laughs> but it's interesting that this foreign prince gets an amazingly beautiful young wife when he seems like the sister to have just kind of been there. There's, there's no character growth for anyone here but Tatterhood. And even then, it's not really growth, is it? She, she kind of came out awesome and, and ended awesome, just looking different. So let me know what you think. <laughs> I couldn't find any adaptations in film or other media, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. So let me know if you've seen any. Again, I think this is such an interesting story. I just wonder what it's trying to really say about appearance. Clearly Tatterhood was beautiful inside all along. And I know it's a fairy tale moral message that outer beauty reflects inner beauty, but why did she have to change? I wonder, just to make the prince happy. She got to marry him, that's what she wanted. So let me know what you think. And thank you for spending some time with me here today. Again, if you are interested in Tolkien lore, I am currently working my way through the Silmarillion and you are more than welcome to check that out at The Folksy Friend. Have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you soon.